In this video, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at a rigid body 2D. So I have a box up here. I've got a box collider on it. And underneath that, I have an empty with a box collider on it, which just encompasses all of the sprites. So if I turn the sprites off and select the platform again, the empty, we can go ahead and we can see the collider. This just saves me having to put six colliders in the scene where I can get away with one. So let's go ahead and we'll select our box, the one that we're going to be dropping. And let's go ahead and we'll add a rigid body. So we'll start typing in rigid. And we have two options here. The first one, the rigid body, that's for use in the 3D system. If we went ahead and tried to add it, we're going to get this error because we already have a 2D collider attached. So we only have one option here, which is the rigid body 2D, which is the one we want so we can work with the 2D physics engine. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at the parameters. I'm going to start off with the bottom one here, static. If we go ahead and set the rigid body to being static, that means that this object cannot be moved with physics. It becomes well, essentially immovable. So while it's the most performant of all the rigid bodies, it doesn't actually do anything. It just sits there and allows you to bounce stuff off of it. Next up, we have kinematic. Now kinematic allows you to detect all the physics going on in your game but you can't really interact with it, at least not in the sense of letting the physics control your rigid body. You have to script all that. So while you can detect when you hit stuff, you can even go as far as detect where you were hit. You can't have physics spin you and move you. You have to script that. So you get more control, but you've got more work. Next up, we have dynamic. And this means that your game object is fully under control of the physics engine. So if you get hit by something, it's going to spin you. It's going to add force. Everything that the physics engine gives you will be applied to you. So the next parameter under that is the material, which allows you to apply a physics material 2D. And just like with the colliders, you can go ahead and control your friction and your bounciness with it. And of course, the next one is simulated, which is a toggle. Now this is just more performant than turning your colliders on and off. So if for some reason you want to stop interacting with the, the physics world around you, turning off this toggle is more performant than going through and turning off your colliders, even if you only have one. Then when you're ready for physics to start interacting with you again, you can just go ahead and turn it back on. So the next parameter under that is use auto mass. And when we select that, it goes ahead and allows our colliders to dictate the, well, the mass of our game object. So I turn it off and this density property pops up. And then we can go ahead and play around with that to adjust our mass. And this is going to pop up on all our colliders that we have attached to this game object. So I'm going to go ahead and set it back to one. Turn that off. And next we have mass. If we don't want to have an auto mass, we want to set our masses manually. This is where we do it. Now the next two options for drag, linear drag and angular, angular drag, work pretty much the same. With linear drag, if you were to go ahead and throw a baseball straight forward, with a linear drag of zero, it's just going to travel forever. Linear drag is friction. So as you start increasing this value, it's going to slow your baseball down. The larger the number, the faster it's going to slow it down. So maybe you're in a baseball stadium, you've got this set to, I don't know, 0 0.1. Uh, it's, even that's kind of high. Say you have it set to 0 0.01, you throw your baseball, eventually it's going to slow down, but it's going to cross that home plate still pretty quick. But let's say now you're underwater and you want to throw that same baseball. Maybe you want a linear drag of, uh, I don't know, 0.5, and it's going to slow down really fast. Now with angular drag, it affects the rotation. So if you were to take a car wheel and just spin it clockwise, if this value is set to zero, that's going to spin forever. But of course, as you increase the value, it slows the spinning down. Now gravity scale is exactly what it sounds like. In Unity, you already have the gravity set, and this is just a modifier. So at one, we're using 100% of whatever the gravity is set to. And we can find that if we come up into the menu and go Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D. Make sure it's the Physics 2D and not the Physics. We want the 2D Physics. And the very first one that opens up here is what our gravity is set to. So by default, it's set to negative 9.81 on the Y. Increasing this will increase the gravity for our whole game, not just this scene. Likewise, if you want your gravity to shift in one or the other directions, we can go ahead and change that. Hell, we can even have it where gravity is shooting you off the ground if we wanted to. But I'm going to keep mine at the default values. Under that, we have collision detection. And there's two options here for discrete and continuous. If you want to detect when two objects collide with each other, that's discrete collision detection. But sometimes you have a game object that travels so fast that in the course of one frame, it completely passes through another game object's collider. 
In cases like that, you'll want to go ahead and switch over to continuous and hopefully you can catch that way. It could still be traveling so fast that you, that you don't catch it. Generally, if you're going to have things moving that fast, you're not going to try to use physics to catch it. You'll want to go ahead and use something like ray casting. As continuous, collision detection is pretty heavy. So under that, we have the sleeping mode. And I'm going to start off with the bottom one here, the start asleep. And that means that the physics on this game object is essentially turned off until it collides with something, then it turns back on. The start awake means that the physics on this object is awake as soon as it comes into the scene. And then never sleep is essentially what it sounds like. It, it never sleeps. Even when it's not on camera, it's still running, even though it doesn't have to. And as we go along with our 2D game development, we'll see situations where we might want to use each of these. The never sleep option is the heaviest of the, the three. All right, so next, interpolate. Interpolate will smooth out the movement of an object that's controlled through physics. So sometimes you'll have something that's moving a little jerky because physics is moving it. And we can go ahead and smooth that out through interpolation. So by default, it's set to none. Interpolate will calculate the next spot it's supposed to be at based on the previous spot, or at least where we're supposed to be at now based on the last frame. And then extrapolate is it'll go ahead and try to predict where I'm supposed to be right now based on where I think my next frame is going to be or where I'm supposed to be in that next frame. So look to the past, look to the future. Generally, if it's a little jerky, switching it to interpolate will solve everything. Generally. So next up, we have constraints. Now these constraints only apply to physics, or at least in the way that physics affects our game object. So if I were to go ahead and take this cube, or I keep calling it a cube, my crate, put it here and just drop it. It's gonna come down, it's gonna catch the corner here, and is it set to trigger? It is, it's not supposed to. It's gonna come down, the corner is gonna catch here, which is gonna cause it to spin and fly off a little bit in this direction. There we go. So if we went ahead and froze the Z rotation, so now it can't freeze on Z, and we drop it, since it can't freeze, now it falls down and the collider is colliding here, or if you're looking at it down here, and it doesn't spin. And of course, turn it back on, and away it goes. And with freezing position X and Y, it's exactly what it sounds like. The physics cannot move this game object. So even though I have gravity turned on, if I go ahead and start this up, because I have it frozen on Y, it won't move that way. Now, if something came in and hit me from the side, I could still move on X through physics, just not Y, regardless of what I move my gravity to. Well, we'll turn that off. And under that, we do have a little bit of info. Great for debugging, but of course, we can't edit it manually. Now, I have gone ahead and written a script here. I'm going to shrink this up and come into my script folder and box test. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on and let's open it up. Now for those that have done any scripting for the 3D physics engine in Unity, you'll notice a lot of similarities here. Instead of having on collision enter and receiving a collision as a parameter, it's now on collision enter 2D and on collision, or sorry, collision 2D being passed in as a parameter. Likewise with the trigger, just add a 2D at the end and this also extends to the stay and exit method. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and detect when something collides with me, go ahead and spit out the name of what collided with me, or what I collided with. Then after that, we'll go ahead and test out the triggering. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump back into Unity. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab the box, trigger is turned off. I'm gonna move it over here so it doesn't fall off. And of course it falls down as soon as it hits, bam. Platform collided with me, right? This is what we hit. This is what we hit. Remember it detects the collider, not the sprite. We have no colliders on any of these, just on the platform. So that's what we hit. We'll go ahead, turn that off. We'll go and turn it to a trigger. Now when we start it back up, it's gonna pass right through because, well, that's what triggers do. But we do get the message that we went through it. Anyway, that should be enough to get you started with rigid body 2Ds in your game. And I'll see you in the next video. Let me know down below if you have any other questions. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.